Hi, Victory Kids. My name is Dylan, and I am super excited that you're here. Today, we are continuing our series that we've been calling Born is the King. Our memory verse for this series is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, which says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. This whole series we've been telling the Christmas story, and our big idea has been Jesus is the King. Everybody say, Jesus is the King. Awesome job. Well, today we're going to continue looking at the Christmas story from a different angle, as we'll be talking about a man named Simeon. He's a part of the Christmas story that we don't normally hear about. Today's story is found in Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 38. Now, can anybody tell me, is the book of Luke found in the New Testament or the Old Testament of the Bible? It's found in the New Testament. Now, that means it's going to be towards the back of your Bible. If you need help finding the story, raise your hand and one of our Victory Kids leaders will help you find it. In this story, we hear about a man named Simeon. Simeon loved God so much and trusted in God's promises. One day, God spoke to Simeon and told him that he would get to see the Savior Jesus before he died. When Simeon heard this, he was super excited. The reason Simeon found this super exciting was because God had promised the Savior for hundreds of years. That's a super long time. So many people had even waited longer than Simeon to meet Jesus. So when Simeon heard that he was going to meet the Savior, it blew his mind. Can you imagine waiting your whole life for something, not sure when it's going to happen or if it's even going to, and then out of nowhere, it's finally about to happen. Although Simeon knew he was going to meet the Savior, he didn't know when. Sometimes when God gives us a promise, we have to wait before it happens. Has your parents ever promised you something, but you had to wait for it? One time, my mom promised me I could have ice cream, but I had to wait until everyone was finished with dinner. Man, my family are some slow eaters. I never thought they were going to finish. I imagine that Simeon felt the same way, not knowing when he was going to meet Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus so bad, and it felt like he'd been waiting for forever. We see in this story that when God promises something, we usually have to wait before it happens. Waiting isn't the most fun thing to do, but God always has a reason for making us wait. So when Jesus was born, angels appeared to some shepherds and told them that the Savior had been born. A shepherd is simply just someone who watches and takes care of sheep. They were so excited that they went and told everybody that they knew. Now back then, they didn't have any kind of technology like computers or cell phones, so Simeon didn't know that Jesus had been born yet. A little while after Jesus was born, God spoke to Simeon and told him to go to the temple. He probably didn't know why, but he trusted God, so he went anyways. When God spoke to Simeon and told him to go to the temple, he listened to God and did exactly what God told him to do, even though he didn't know why. In the same way, when God tells us to do something, we should do it even if we don't know why yet. In the Bible, it says in the book of James that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. It's okay to ask God questions, but it's important that we listen first and then ask. Think about it. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen twice as much as we speak. At the temple, Simeon saw Mary and Joseph carrying baby Jesus inside to dedicate him to God. As soon as Simeon saw them, he knew baby Jesus was the Savior. The Bible doesn't tell us how he knew, but I imagine he had a gut feeling where he just knew right away. When Simeon saw Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus, he went up to them right away and said, Lord, you are king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. With my own eyes, I've seen what you've done to save your people. See, meeting Jesus was the one thing Simeon had wanted to do in his whole life. Simeon was pretty old and had waited for a long time for God to keep his promise. Now that he met Jesus, he was ready to die in peace. Meanwhile, at the temple that day was a woman named Anna. She was very old and spent all of her time at the temple worshiping God. So she never left. Just like Simeon, 
she was waiting for the Savior God had promised. She approached Joseph, Mary, Simeon, and baby Jesus while Simeon was talking to them, and she immediately began to praise God because she knew the Savior was finally here. See, Simeon and Anna trusted in God's promise, and even though they had to wait, God always keeps his promise. That reminds me of a story in my life where God promised me something, and it came true. Now, you may not know this about me, but I actually moved here not too long ago all the way from a state called West Virginia. Raise your hand, have any of you boys or girls ever been to West Virginia before? Well, it's super far away. It's a 16 hour drive from Tulsa, which is almost an entire day in the car. Well, being here in Tulsa meant that I wasn't going to be home for Thanksgiving this year. This would be the very first year I wouldn't be with my family for Thanksgiving. And one day God spoke to me and told me that I was going to be going home for Thanksgiving and that he was gonna give me everything I needed. This was so exciting to me because I didn't think I was going to be able to see my family this year. At that moment in time, I was nowhere close to having everything I needed. This trip was gonna cost a lot of money and take a lot of time, but I knew that God's promises always come true. So I began to believe that I was going to have everything I needed, just like God had told me. When God spoke this to me, it was a couple months before Thanksgiving, so I had a while to wait. Now, that wasn't quite as long as Simeon, but it sure felt like forever. Throughout that time, I had a lot of moments where it was hard for me to believe that God was going to keep his promise. Sometimes it can be so easy to think more about what we don't have rather than what God has already given us or is about to give us. See, God is so much bigger than anything we could ever dream of. He's bigger than our problems, which means he can easily take care of any situation we are faced with. In those times, God spoke to me through his word, which is the Bible. He gave me Bible verses to help me get through the tough times. The first verse was in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse four, which says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. To delight in the Lord means to take joy and celebrate God. The desires of our heart are the things we want more than anything else. So this verse is saying that if we take joy in the Lord, he will give us the things we want more than anything. Another verse that helped me in this time was in the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse six, which says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. This verse is a reminder that we don't have to worry or be afraid. All we have to do is tell God what we need, thank him for all he's done, and he will take care of our problem. One way we can do those things is by praying or singing songs of praise to God. That's why we worship every weekend at Victory Kids. Those are just two of the thousands of promises in the Bible. I encourage you guys that the next time you want something, look in your Bible and see what it has to say. Sometimes there are things that God has promised us that we don't even know about. So what I began to do whenever I began to doubt or get afraid is I would read those verses and remember that God's promises always come true. God can't lie, and if he promised it, then that settles it. So then the time came for my trip back home. The only problem was I still didn't have the things I needed to get home, and so I began to get worried that I wasn't gonna be able to get home. Going home was such a big deal to me because I really missed my family, and I wanted to see them more than anything in the world. One night, right before I was scheduled to leave on my trip, I cried out to God for help. Sometimes things don't make sense why they haven't happened, but we just have to know that God always knows exactly what to do and his promises always come true. Everyone repeat this with me. Say, God's promises always come true. Great job. That night, God spoke to me and told me not to worry because he was in control and would bring everything I needed, just as he promised. The next day, God spoke to me again and told me the name of one of my friends and said to go and talk to them. And when I did, they brought up my trip and said they had felt God telling them to help me get the things I needed to go. They gave me exactly what I needed. Sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers the way we would think he would. I imagine Simeon didn't expect to be told to go to the temple or that at the temple he would see Jesus that moment. 
If I were Simeon, I would have just thought God wanted me to go to the temple to pray. But as you see, God always keeps his promises. So as we close, would you pray with me? Everyone say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for dying for me. I know that when I trust in you, you always keep your promise. In Jesus' name, amen.